After watching episodes six through eight of Love is Blind, I have three main thoughts. The first being, how the f did Kwame end up on Love is Blind? Apparently he was auditioning for Married at First Sight. Was he recruited? Do people were like, oh yeah, you seem so great. Like, let's put you on Love is Blind. Is that what happened? Was he, rec are people getting recruited for Love is Blind? I just didn't know this. Like, was Arena secretly recruited? I hope there's no way that girl actually applied for the show and was actually chosen. I feel like there's no way. He also does not live in Seattle. He lives in Portland. And then Micah. Micah lives in Arizona. She spends her time between Arizona and Seattle. And I'm just like, for both of my first two points, it's not the whole pitch of a show like Love is Blind that we will maybe choose you a partner. They could not be attractive. You might have nothing in common with them. They could be an awful person. They could only want you for social media followers. But at the very least, at the very least, they promise you that they are going to be from the city you live in. And, they, and we have two people who don't. And it only bothers me so much because both of their main problems with their relationship stems from the fact that they don't live in the city that their partner does. And I'm like, make it make sense, Netflix, make it make sense. And the third point, Bliss. How was Bliss able to get back on this show? I wanna know, I really truly wanna know how that was able to happen. Hi y'all, I'm Kaisa Mo, welcome to my channel. Today we'll be talking about episodes six through eight of Love is Blind. Buckle down because this is gonna be a fairly long one in my opinion. If you're new here, and lots of you probably are, or maybe you're returning, if you're returning, please subscribe. If you're new here and you likely are, I do commentary, lifestyle, and review content. And right now I'm more focused on reality, dating, television content as we are in the peak of Love is Blind. And Love is Blind is one of my all-time favorites dating competition reality shows. And why I say competition reality shows? Because you're competing for love. There's a prize at the end, the prize is the altar. Like you cannot commit to me otherwise, okay? I thought that let's get into this video recap of episode six through eight. In episode six, we left off with Zach sitting like this, waiting for Bliss to arrive. So since him and Arena broke up, he's now like, I get to go to my second draft pick, Bliss, who I chose not to select because I did not think she was attractive. I don't know if that's actually what happened, but in my mind, I feel like he was like, she's just really smart and Arena sounds like really silly, flirty, and dumb, so she must be hot. Honestly, that's really what it feels like. <laughs> She treated me like shit. We're literally sleeping on the opposite sides of the bed. We don't touch. Zero affection. You proposed to her, Zach. I did because I still loved her. And they do their whole little talking thing. And I'm very skeptical at this point because I don't really know if I would go back to someone who chose to propose with someone else and then just because it didn't work out, they came back to me. But most of remember, that's how every relationship works. Most people out there are probably their partner's second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth choice. Okay, maybe not directly or literally, but you are only with that person because a series of other relationships did not work out. And if one person had been like, hey, I'm interested, that could have stopped your line. Sad, hard facts. Bliss, who I believe realizes how tough the dating market, especially in Seattle, I've heard it's trash, but tra dating market is trash everywhere. So take that what you will. And I'm not mad at his responses. I think it just boils down to the fact that he felt really solid about Irina and the trust factor. And he does admit that he leaned in a little bit too much on how she was initially receptive of what his family was like when they first met versus ignoring all these other things. And Bliss to her benefit is not hearing it, but she's like hearing it, but she's like not and taking it. She's like, okay, imagine we're on a date and your partner's like, yeah, so, you know, like, I'm sorry, I broke up with you, but like, you know, I wanna get back together. You broke up like two weeks ago, right? You're like, okay, it's not like dead in the water, but you're like skeptical. You'd be like, okay. Thank you for telling me this, we will see. You will likely not fully trust that person even if you decide to get back together with them, which is what Bliss ultimately does decide to do. She does like test the waters quite a bit. They end up doing a cute little date where he makes her dinner and it goes super poorly. I think it's at his house because they're not getting engaged couples so they don't get the whole like Netflix house. You know, it's cute. Like he's like really trying and I feel like there's a lot of effort that he did behind the scenes to make Bliss come over to his side that we don't see but we do kind of get like touches on or sprinkles on, but we do see a big resentment that Bliss still carries for the fact that he chose Arena over her. And that's a very hard thing to get rid of. So they go on a level of voting dates and it like, it literally, if we're like an English class, what parallels the day he went on with Arena on a boat and 
Mexico where she was so unreceptive, so not wanting to touch him. And then Bliss being like more touchy and more open to him and decides to pop the question and propose. I was shooketh. I was shooketh about this because me personally, I would turn it down. And I don't think that they realize the fact that they literally won at this point. They were able to pursue their relationships outside of the pods, meet in person, date, and not have to feel the pressure for engagement. Because what comes with the pressure of the engagement is the pressure of saying yes or no at the altar. They literally could have just met, dated at their own leisure, planned the wedding of their dreams, got married outside of all this. So I'm very curious as why they chose to pursue that option, I guess, for the Netflix apartment, which is cute. It's very nice. This season he's amazing. Instagram followers, he has like 49,000 followers. I don't know how many Bliss has, but he doesn't have like a lot. But look at some more than I do. I have like literally nothing. You can follow me if you wish. I never plug it, but at Kaya Simone. All of the Love is Blind couples are back in Seattle in their Netflix sponsored apartments. The whole mission of the apartments is to basically give the couples an opportunity to build the relationships on a level playing ground. So they're not in her apartment or his apartment, it's their apartment. And then after that, they'll go into the opportunity to see each other's own places and how they live. But right now the focus is more so on, hey, these are new spaces. I would love to say that all the couples are doing well right off the bat. They are not. <laughs> they are two big conversations that end up being had. One between Jacqueline and Marshall and the other between Paul and Micah. Micah, as she has to, decides to confront Paul about, hey, just like wanting to talk to you about that whole arena thing in Mexico. Are you interested in her? Do you like her? What was that about? Irina came up to me and kind of like let me know that she... And Paul's like, what? Me? Never. What are you even talking about? Irina, don't like her. Uh, crazy. And I'm like, sir, every single time the camera was panning in Mexico, you were either nowhere to be seen, not with Micah or with Irina. Like, let's be, be freaking for real, like, sir. And Mike is just like, yeah, I just want to check in about that because it was just really weird for me. I just want to make sure. He's basically like, maybe she has feelings for me, but I do not reciprocate that at all. So we all know what this is going to mean. Mike is going to confront Irene about all this. The other conversation that is had is between Marshall and Jackie. And one of the things she's like, yeah, you know, like now we're back, you know, in Mexico, you know, you had like your freak out. I just want to touch base with you to see how, how you're doing. My mom, I told my dad, they're like, huh? Are you okay with me meeting your parents? And are your parents okay with meeting me? And basically Jackie's just like, I don't, I don't know. I don't like, I don't think so. They're not really happy or supportive about me going on the show. And like, that brings me to one of my main points. Let me get close as I talk about this. Okay. You know, you're going on Love is Blind. You probably told someone. You probably told your best friends, your parents. You told someone you're going on this show, okay? You are selected to be on Love is Blind. So now you know for sure that you're going to be spending 10 days in the pods trying to find your partner and that it ends with an engagement or ends up in marriage, okay? And so now is the time to tell your parents, hey, I'm going on Love is Blind. And they're like, oh, what's that show about? Okay, yeah, so basically it's a show for 10 days we da, 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 and it ends up with an engagement and then ultimately like a wedding if we both agree and your parents are like wait what that's crazy and then you have to be like yeah but that's what i want to do so they're either gonna say okay well let's see how things go don't love that but you know you never know because they're gonna think you're not gonna find anyone cool or they're gonna be like heck no we are not okay with you doing that if you go on that we will not be happy with your partner so no and then it's up to you to either decide am i willing to cause future strife with my family for this person I don't even know to go on this reality show for my millions of Instagram followers? Or am I not gonna do it because it's easier for me in my life and my family would not approve, okay? Then what your answer is, you either don't go to the show or you do, right? You can't be out here being like, yeah, they're not gonna be really happy about this and then have that cause problems in your relationship because that's not fair to the other person. Like, if I was ever on the show, I'd probably be like, look, my dad's not gonna be happy about this. He probably will refuse to see you, but like, I know he'll get over it. Like, I'll just be real about that. But you have to have understanding what your family is okay with and what it's not, and it's not seem like Jackie's family would ever actually be okay with her meeting someone through a reality dating show and marrying them. So 
our first couple that's going to visit each other's apartments is going to be Chelsea and Kwame. Kwame does go to Chelsea's apartment because she lives in Seattle and he lives in Portland. So I guess that's an easy choice. Okay, I know realistically it's like three hours, but like, it's like kind of a lot. Like I'm, you may be being a long situation at this point. Like I'm upset. And Kwame bullies her for having pink stuff everywhere. I'm like, what's wrong with having an accent color? I like pink. A lot of girls like pink. A lot of people like pink. There's nothing wrong with pink. It's just, it's just everywhere. She's like, this is my place with my personality. And I hope that I can intermix my personality into our shared space. It was my truest representation of who I am at being. Okay. And that is entirely this apartment. That's why this apartment has been such a healing space for me. Tiffany introduces Brett to her friends and they're such an open-minded, lovely, high energy bunch. And I'm just so happy that we can have a friend meetup that goes well. So usually they're just like so bad and like people are being so mean. And I'm like, why would you be out really mean and aggressive to your friends? That's what happens when Mike introduces Paul to her friends. So can't wait to get into that. And like her friends are really crying because like Tiffany is one of the best people I've ever met. And like, we just want the best for her. I don't know if my friends have said that much about me. I think I'm like good friend, but like, I don't know if I get people to cry over me because they want me to be so happy. Paul and Zach are meeting up, chit chatting. I guess they're friends. It's very weird seeing in the same scene because they're basically the same type of person, but in different fonts, if that makes sense. Both white boys, nerdy, brown hair. But just a little bit like a little bit like a little, little tweaks here and there, little tweaks here and there. And he's just talking to and Zach is just giving Paul advice. Cause suddenly Zach is his own relationship expert all of a sudden. About like, I feel like Micah can get you to be the kind of person that you want to be. But he says one really, really good piece of advice. Yeah. If you really want it, at some point you're gonna have to pick someone. What is the cost of, of continually waiting for that next better person or right. the cost of continually just trading? I don't like love that it felt like he was talking about a car. But like it kind of is. Like dating is kind of like owning a car, like searching for a car and then owning it. So the best car you can get right now is what be 2024 or a 2023 if you're just like playing it safe. But let's say like, get a 2024. BMW, Audi. My dream car, love it, I'm obsessed. Next year, as soon as I get this car, there's gonna be a 2025. I guess I could keep trading it in for the newest model each time, or I could be happy with my 2024 BMW because I was like so enthused about it. It was exactly what I wanted. If I can pay the maintenance fees, change the tires, that sounds weird now, but like you get what I'm saying. Like you could have to invest in a personal relationship at some point. You can't just keep getting rid of it when it like is causing you trouble or it's not what you exactly what you want at all times like no micah does ultimately confront Irina about her attraction to paul and how that was going can you letting me know that you were like talking like about you know like my fiance like behind my back like sucks and Irina just keeps laughing she's like she's like are you like jealous or something and mike is like i don't give a fuck Okay, look, I don't give a fuck because Paul has said he has no interest in you whatsoever and is not attracted to you at all. So I'm fine. And that shuts up Arena real quick because I don't think she actually thought that Paul wasn't interested in her. I think in her mind, she's like, okay, I'll end things with Zach and then I'll go to Paul because he's like interested in me. But now the fact that Irene is like, no, Paul does not want you. So Irina just keeps asking questions like, are you sure he's not interested? Are you sure? And Mike is like, he's not. And it felt very like Irina was very upset about this whole conversation. And Micah had to say, I haven't seen Paul. Paul doesn't sound like he like wants to see me or like talk to me. Like, no. Like Which I was really proud of Micah being like, look, I think we're really close friends at this point, but I can't have you out here wanting my man or chasing him. Like that's not cool with me. So you have to decide to let that go or if that's what you're gonna keep doing, but like that can't keep being a conversation thing. And I'm like, I'm giving Micah snaps. Like she's definitely got a way better edit, like this bucket of episodes we did the first half. I don't know why the whole sentiment changed in editing. Maybe they needed a villain up front and they decided we can get Irina, but now we can pivot to love. Don't know. I was watching this with my mom and she was like, people on the show say wild things. And this is because Brett said to Tiffany that he didn't realize that someone could be a good person and then also attractive on the outside. And I'm like, a, there's me, but you haven't met me, Brett, but like, I exist. And a lot of people function like that. We close out episode six on a 
cliffhanger for Chelsea and Kwame because like things got from like 95 to 35 with them like real quick because Chelsea is supposed to be interested in Kwame to her dad and she's just like I don't know if it's gonna work out like I just don't know how he's gonna act or how is he gonna be like <sighs> like I don't know and Kwame's like you're making me anxious now all of a sudden and like we just need to breathe and calm down she's just like uh, and like the stress and I'm like okay it's because I'm assuming that Chelsea's never dated a black person and she just honestly does not know how her dad views people of color. I know how my parents view non-people of color, but not everyone knows how their parents view that because it's a very, very interesting conversation. You may not want to open that can of worms, but if you do not know, I would just do a little fun little little, little exercise where you go to your parents and be like, hey, you know, just, just wanted to ask you real quick, just a little, little quick question. It might change your relationship with them forever, but I should know. Episode seven, we pick up where we left off with Chelsea's dad meeting Kwame for the first time and this man is like the oldest of little sweet white man who looks like he was like kicking and rocking it the 80s probably went to a soul train he's like the stereotypical like hip cool older white man dad like he's wearing a little beret a sweater he looks cool he looks exactly like oh, what celebrity am I thinking of and she's like yeah this is like Kwame you know I went on that show called love is blind and he's like like this he's like Okay, he's like seeing where how this is going. He's gonna know how the show went. And she's like, yeah, like we're engaged now. And he's like, oh, really? And he's happy. He's like happy. Like as he is giving you the best you could ever ask for from a parent. If you go on a dating show and you're engaged to someone your parents have never met. He is perfect. And she's happy. Kwame's like, oh, yeah. It's like basically, why are you guys all freaking out? And I'm like, look, so they may cause you strife, but also save you trouble if you ask your parents how they view people who are not your race. That's your little takeaway for the day. Micah meets Paul's mom. We're doing a lot of like single parent meetings, which is interesting. Fair and valid, for sure, for sure. But interesting, cause like I don't know everyone's like fully like relationship dynamics with their families, but it'd be helpful to know like, is there a dad in Paul's life? Are they separated? Do they live in separate states? But like right off the bat, like Paul's mom is so aggressive. She's like, I looked you up. I know where you're from. You're from Arizona. Like your family is like this or that. You live on the street. You used to do this for your career. You're in the sorority, da 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 da. And I'm like, you are giving everything any girl would want in a best girlfriend when she's like trying to fuck a guy she's seeing. But that's a little much our first meeting, like meeting my future mother-in-law. Very, very intense. And Micah makes this one comment <laughs> where she's like, I always like wonder why me and Paul like got along and why he liked me. It's because we're exactly the same person. Like him, yes, Micah and Paul's mom are exactly the same person. From their hair, their personalities, it's like wow. It's really funny how that happened. We're okay. We're gonna be, we're gonna be bouncing around. <laughs> it's gonna be a little bit chaotic because we're bouncing around between like meeting parents, seeing apartments, and then like relationship drama. Brett takes Tiffany to view his apartment. It's beautiful. Like all the other guys' apartments are messy, a disaster. Paul's who apartment I didn't like touch on. Had randomly had knives everywhere and two couches and used a dining room for his work from home setup. And had like two really tiny closets and Micah just kept dogging him on it. Typical man apartment. That's as much as I can expect from any man. But Brett on the other hand, clean, pristine, if I had left my apartment to go on a trip for 14 days, it would be a living disaster. It is a nightmare because I know it's a nightmare because I'm not in my current apartment right now. That's why I'm sitting on this chair. I'm back home in Texas. This is like my bedroom here. So that's why I slept a little bit different. In case you're wondering. <laughs> and like this place is gorgeous. No dishes in sight. Plants are still alive. Like he must have watered them before he left or had someone take care of his pets. All of his shoes are in their own pristine like shoe boxes and these are like nice shoes tiffany's walking around she's just like ah, ah, this man got monty and i'm like he's like 36. i'm not saying you have to be rich at 36 but like i expect my partner that i meet to have like some sense of stability and wealth at that point you know like he's a grown-ass man like he's a grown-ass man tiffany but like she's punching the boxes she's just like oh wow she's looking at the closet space She's like, hmm, I don't know if there's enough space for both of us. And he says, Brett says two really amazing things. Brett says two things that would make me want to marry this man today and get myself pregnant to lock him in. I would never, but it gave me those ideas. He says,
immediately immediately he's like we can get more space if that's good for you and that was great on two points one because he's fiscally responsible to know that he can't just break a lease but your apartment complex will usually let you transfer at least to another apartment in the building that's available to you. And two, he wants to make sure that his space seems like your space and not just his space. Love, Brett. The other thing he says, like they're talking about finances and she's like, yeah, like what's the most thing you've ever spent? What's the most expensive thing you've ever spent money on? She's like, I just want to make sure that like, you know, your finances are in check. Like, you know, I've worked really hard for mine. Tiffany lives with a roommate. I mean, Seattle's probably expensive for sure. Like I have two roommates in New York. I will probably be 30 still having at least one roommate in New York like it's hard to save and like do what you want to do sometimes and he's like yeah the most of our the most expensive thing I ever spent was like you know luggage she's like how much he's like 1200 he's like it's really nice you know it's like durable and I'm like okay okay you got one of those like probably like French made like handmade handcrafted luggage lifetime warranty peeing like warranty things i'm sure it's cute but that's a lot for luggage and she's like what that's crazy and he's like you know like when it comes to shared expenses like i'm always happy splitting things it doesn't be even per se it could be 60 40 maybe 70 80 20 and tiffany's just like really <laughs> and i'm like yeah girl like if you don't marry this man i will fly to seattle and get a job at nike to marry him like i'm just saying to him, yeah i hope you do jackie is freaking out and tells marshall that she's making it worse for him and she's freaking out because she's about to meet marshall's family and she's like will they accept me will they like me but also in the back of her mind she's freaked out because she's like okay if i meet marshall's family and it goes well at some point i'm gonna have to try to talk to my parents and talk to my family or get marshall to meet them and she's just not ready for it and she's just very stressing out about that situation so much i said this in my jackie and marshall video which you can see linked up here jackie is just not ready for a relationship she is not she should have never been chosen or selected on the show like that was a hard mistake on the show's part and her part as well like i don't know why she applied for the show maybe she was recruited like our boy kwame but she should have never been on this show we meet marshall's i think like sister or sister-in-law and brother and niece and like they're adorable like she's beautiful they're a beautiful family jackie like loves them and she's just like oh, wow i can't believe you guys like are open to this and like like me and they're like yeah like why wouldn't we and i'm like yeah why wouldn't they like why wouldn't your family support your partner if your family does not support your partner that is hard that is hard but there has to be some level of trust they have in you that you make the right decisions for yourself and if they don't have that in you it's really really tough so chelsea now that kwame has met her dad she's like i did my part we're good there now it's your turn when will i be meeting your parents like your mother like is she okay with meeting me like when's that gonna happen and he's just like she was really really upset with me going on the show like i just don't see how she'd be okay with it but like let me call her he calls her he does not try hard enough in my personal opinion to convince his mom i'm disappointed he's like i get you that you're disappointed okay thank you for your time we will check in later and i'm like that's all you're gonna say you're not gonna like yeah i understand this process like she's the love of my life like i get along with her so well like this is her and like he just feel like he gave up a lot and this is like a really weird scene we don't hear kwame's mom's audio at all we just hear kwame's side of the conversation while he's speaking into the phone so it feels like very like staged and fake but word on the street is it just happens that way because kwame's mom didn't like sign off to have like her voice or likeliness used so that's why you'll hear kwame's side of the conversation this isn't discussed at all within like our bucket of like six through eight so i'm sure like nine through eleven we'll get more into like Kwame's side because I can't just like brush that over and get to the altar like you know I'm sure we're gonna dive deeper into that yeah and that's where we end episode seven I just want to say this real quick somehow for some reason Micah and Paul get like the most of the relationship content than the other couples when I say relationship content I mean like meeting friends and family so we've had Micah meet Paul's parents we have Micah introducing Paul to her friends we have Paul meeting Micah's parents like Everyone else has either met parents or friends that's it but somehow Mike and Paul get all like how <laughs> so her parents are like oh cool you're engaged she's like yep and they're like where are you gonna live she's like, with Paul and they ask us because they know that she doesn't live in Seattle like she lives part-time in Seattle and part-time in Arizona how she's on the show do not know 
and they get into the little kids thing but she's like well we'll figure it out Micah's dad is named Paul and he's like yeah he could be a serial killer but Thanks, Paul. Can't be too bad. I had my wine here today because I am distressed and stressed, and that is solely because of our Jackie and Marshall content. I get good vibes from Paul, probably because he's Paul. I mean, I don't know him. You know, he can be a serial killer for all I know. Larry, if I drank every single time that Jackie confused me with how she felt that it was okay for her to go on this show, I would be blackout. We first see Marshall. He has like his luggage with him and he's like rolling it. I'm like, where is this guy going? Didn't they already move in? And he's like, yeah, you know, I had to move out like the past few days. I've been staying in my own apartment. Jackie and I got into a pretty big fight where she told me to boss up, made me feel degraded and I just need to get my own space and just distance myself, but I'm ready to go back. Smart 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 man he has shown us he has like some not anger i don't say like extreme anger issues where he'd be like abusive but like if you have those really strong emotions it's very good to take control and distance yourself from it he gets back he's like hey jackie what are you doing and she's like packing her bags he's like oh are you packing she's like well yeah i'm packing she's like well you weren't here to stay and talk like you immediately just left i do not want to call see i'm clapping i do not want to call their relationship toxic but it does have abusive and not great domestic tendencies. That sounds like toxicity. You didn't want to sit here and, and talk. You're like, I'm leaving. You what else am I supposed there. to do? I never said you weren't man enough for me. I just said to be more aggressive. We don't have sex, bro. I just believe they suffer from a lack of communication that has become troubling to their interpersonal dynamics and that's hurting them as people. That is my psychological viewpoint. And Marshall's just like, you know, I'm leaving because you told me to boss up, to man up, that I wasn't man enough for you. And she's like, well, you don't like have sex with me. And he's like, wait, how's that my problem? What, what? Like, I didn't choose that. And she's upset. She's not having it at all. And he takes out his tinny clapped and he's just like, what do you want me to do about it? And if you're a black person, you know what that means. If you're not a black person, clapping is serious. You're reiterating your points. You want someone to listen and be heard. You cannot, this is an uncontrollable emotion. It feels like, what do you want me to do about that? Jackie's like, why are you clapping at me? He's like, well, I'm just trying to talk to you. You're not hearing me. And she's like, I never told you not to boss up. And he's like, yes, you like, he's like, yes, you did. And it's just like, it was like not conducive at all. And Jackie in her little confessional, she's like, I never told him that like, he wasn't a man. I just told him to boss up and be like more manly. I told him I wanted him to be more aggressive, like boss up. You know this, you know that that's an insecurity point for Marshall where he has always felt like he was not mean enough or it was not okay to be vulnerable, but yet you're telling him to be something he needs not. Like you knew that about him, like you knew that about him. You could have had Josh if that's really what you wanted, but maybe that's what you do. Marshall is what is good for you, you just don't like it. So Jackie asks the question that you should never ask someone. She's like, why did you want to get engaged to me? Marshall says, well, I thought you were a project that I could work on. She's like, whoa, pro and I was like, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. I was like supporting you. I was rooting for you. You lost me. You lost me on that. You lost me. And she's also like, oh, no, I'm a project. I'm a project. I'm, I'm like, yeah, of course, spiraling. We're all spiraling together. But Marshall is good with his words. He takes a step back. He breathes. He wins me back with this. He's like, I thought you were a project. I consider you a project because I saw potential in you. You have never had a relationship before. And I know you have issues expressing your feelings and your issues with your family, but I do see the potential in us getting there and, and you. That's why I consider you a project that I'm willing to invest and work on. And I'm like, okay, you brought me back. But that's something I don't do. <laughs> I don't believe in dating people who are projects. I will support you through your problems, but I'm not your emotional support animal. I'm not there to guide you through everything. That is emotionally taxing for someone in a relationship. And I don't think that's a cross that I, as your partner, need to personally bear. Every time you're having an issue or problem, I'm gonna to have to feel like I have to take the brunt of all that. And that's a heavy weight and I can easily lead to resentment. That's what we're seeing with the case of Marshall and Jackie. I don't wanna say that I've lost all hope in them, but I really hope they do not get married. Like, I think it'd be a quick divorce. Like, they'd be together for the, like, the mandatory, what, Netflix year, and the day the show's out, they're like, yep, yeah, we're divorced. We separated immediately. A week after the honeymoon, we're gone. I'm like, yeah. Bliss and Zachariah finally move into their couple's apartment. 
and they're talking just like you know just like couple stuff and bliss of course brings up the fact that like he has no more chances like this is it because it's, it's hurtful I, I i get it i get it but I love you a lot, and I've been very forgiving to you. The concern of being second choice. But you're clearly not. Right? I don't think that's clear. You have to keep that pressure to have him not forget. But the problem is, you can't let it become such a big thing where it becomes resentment, or you feel so resentful for him. That's why it was like my whole point was like I can't believe she didn't just decide to not give her post to or her and Zach could have like taken all the time in the world to work out their issues separately, and then like see where they go but no now they're forced to be engaged now they have to get married or break up you know and every time she says this zach will kind of like i don't say roll his eyes but he's just goes like something like that where he's gets really intense and you tell him he's like kind of over the conversation but i'm like you did though you did choose someone else over her you still have to earn her respect and her love back so you may need to try it like she's not gonna just forget that like easily it's just been like two weeks you know like be real guys well, let's get into our favorite couple chelsea and kwame 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 is just in his feels all the time so kwame is upset because he's working from home right now in seattle taking care of chelsea's dog and chelsea works like seven to seven she works like 12 hour days and does a lot of flexibility in her because she has to be in office in person because she's a speech language pathologist which is very in person job they are going to take chelsea's dog to like the dog pound or like not a pound but like a dog place for the dog to run around under wash i don't know why they're just like sitting there i thought she just dropped the dog off and like left but whatever and kwame is just like yeah you know like i just i don't i don't know and she's like what do you know about she's he's like well you work a lot and she's like well okay and chelsea's like i want to have kids pretty soon and kwame's like yeah but like you work a lot and you don't have the flexibility and what if i'm gonna go to aruba or puerto rico like you can't do that with a baby he's like i work from home i have a lot of flexibility and she's like we can travel with the baby and Connor's like no we can't okay i literally have a friend who had her baby in november and her and her husband went on a trip with her baby took a tropical location went fine <laughs> like it just depends like every relationship is different everyone prioritizes different things like if you want that to happen you can happen it's not like a picker it doesn't have to be a one or other situation. I feel like that's what a lot of people come from is, is a mindset of scarcity versus abundance. And I think that's kind of how Kwame is viewing this. Kwame is also really upset because he feels like he's had to give a lot to be with Chelsea, namely. I gotta be honest with you. I don't like this lifestyle of just like being with my partner and like traveling the world. And like there's, there's a question that does come up because right now we have Rocky. Did you apply for a dating show where everyone is supposed to be in Seattle? That's the whole entire premise. That's the whole thing that Love is Blind delivers on. It's not called Love is Blind Chicago and they didn't have people from Boston or from Detroit or people from Florida. No, no. So like, yeah, that's kind of on you. Like you could have stayed where you were and stayed in your lane or waited until Love is Blind came to Portland. You didn't have to choose this. So like, don't be putting all that on Chelsea. That's not her cross to bear. I'm not completely lost on them, but they do have lots of stuff to figure out, but I'm hopeful. I do think that they will get married. Are they still married? Probably not, but I do think they'll get married. <laughs> Micah takes Paul to meet her best friends. It goes about as well as you would think for people who consider themselves Micah's friends, which is pretty freaking awful. Like it goes pretty badly. Micah's friend Shelby says something that she's proud of. She's like, <laughs> because I mean, Shelby has single-handedly like terminated relationships for me. <laughs> a couple of them, a couple like, of them. Single-handedly. Why are you proud of that? <laughs> like, why are you proud of that? And Paul's like, okay. And they just keep being mean to Paul, who's just like sitting here being his nerdy analytical, like thinking self. Like, you we just don't know if you're like right for her. And Paul's like, okay. She's easily angered. I mean, can't say that I care. Cool. Mike's like, you don't care that my friends like don't like you or like they're like roasting you. He's like, well, it's not my problem. I'm like, that's a secure king right there. Security's like, it's really not my, my problem. Like, if they don't like me or, like, I can't do anything about that. Especially when they're just being mean and roasting me. Micah does not defend him at all, which is, I don't think is cool in itself. Like, she seems more into keeping her relationships with her other friends, Michaela and Shelby, versus, like, protecting Paul. And I'm like, girl, why? 
we close out this episode with the obligatory setup stage moment where everyone in the pods who kind of sort of had a connection meets up and sees each other who weren't initially matched so the setup right now is gonna be chelsea's birthday party so we see amber we see josh i get amber because amber is friends with chelsea but josh literally chelsea's there she's like who is this man because josh shows up drunk like he shows up to the event drunk okay you can show see that's fine everyone wants a little pregame moment but not like drunk especially for these people you've never been around before and not classy very dick class like what dick classy everyone's going around like having conversations so we have tiffany checking in kwame being like just go with your gut like do what's best for you do what's what's right we have chelsea talking to marshall because marshall shows up alone and everyone's like and Marshall's like, yeah, no, she's going to show up. We talked about it. Yeah, she'll be here. And I'm like, but they just didn't show up together. And no other couple did that. So it's like, not the best sign. I'm sure Josh was a little self. was like, <laughs> And Chelsea's just like telling Marshall, like, hey, I'm sure it's all right. She'll be here. Just like, you know, keep calm. Like, breathe. It'll be okay. Like, she'll show up. And I'm like, okay, that's really nice. I like when like all these like supportive moments between not even the couples, but people who were in the pods. I really like that, like, relationship building aspect, friendship wise. Marshall's talking to Brett one of my favorite like relationships like they're so close you can tell like they're they talk a lot i even see them on tiktok like they hang out <laughs> which i love and marshall's like yeah jackie's never said she like loved me she just says that like i'm her boy like you know we tight and i'm like we tight you got engaged on a we tight we good like you my man like what like, what what josh is cute stupid and awful i guess exactly what jackie would want like he's definitely aggressive <laughs> definitely definitely aggressive he literally says that he wants to mess things up for marshall because he messed things up for him in the pot and i'm like that was the show like he didn't make jackie choose him over you that's not his fault like they tussle and i'm like like we do not want this you do not want this narrative of black people fighting on television i don't want it luckily it, it dwindles down pretty quick but it was wild i think everyone was confused about it it made no sense <laughs> how long you been talking about <laughs> why, <laughs> why you been talking some shit yeah you been talking some shit no oh, okay no. jackie does finally show up in this tight cute dress she briefly talks to marshall marshall tries to convince her to put on his jacket because she's her dress is so tight boobs out she's looking good and he, marshall's like uh -uh, not in front of joss Eventually, somehow, he's able to put the jacket on Jackie. She grabs it for a bit, eventually does take it off. Jackie's talking with her friends, and Josh comes over. He's like, hey, can I steal her? And this girl says yes. You know, first one says yes. Bless. I'm like, bless, girl. And Bless is, like, talking to Zach. And Zach's like, you let him talk to her? She's like, look, we can do anything about it. It's just on Jackie to have that conversation that's it and i'm like yeah you're right bliss it is on jackie to have that conversation she can brush it off real quick if she wants or she can entertain it like that's on that's her decision josh is just like oh, yeah i see you're with nba cry boy cute joke but mean and jackie laughs and she's like <laughs> and he's like yeah like i just don't get why you like chose him over me you know like you know how i felt about you like i opened up and she's like when like you never talked about emotions like that never happened in the box like, i did all the time she's like no i'm like oh okay cool i'm glad you're setting him straight because like marshall was the emotionally open one and we end in the episode by josh just being like well i want you if you still want me and that's where we are and Part of me hopes she says no, but also me is like, whatever saves Marshall from your clutches. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm Kaya Simone. That is a wrap on this recap of episode six and eight. Please give this video a like and subscribe. Please let me know your thoughts down below. Which couples do you think will last? Like, what did you think about the whole Chelsea Kwame situation? Like him living in Portland, but being on the show, that makes no sense. Do we see any drama coming out for Brett and Tiffany or do you think they'll be smooth sailing? I know it's a little bit of a long one, but I hope you guys enjoy. All right, see you guys next time. Bye.